What's cracking? Josie Garfunkel. Let's learn some shit. So today we are going to be discussing underground triggers. I'm going to show you how to set them up using a tool. This Darkness Triggers 3D Grid tool by Dumpgra. I'll have all his links in the description. What this is, is a tool that places a grid visually so you can kind of count what you need to put into the parameters of the underground triggers. All right, so let's go over what the underground triggers are. This is the Bohemia Interactive documentation. I'll get this linked in the Discord and in the video description so you can check it out yourself and read it in depth. Basically, there's different types of these underground triggers. It's essentially a box. You're making a box, but it's same as proxy, so to speak. It's based on a center point with a grid. Same as event groups as well. And relations and grid size is how we make these boxes. Now, we are only going to be discussing the outer trigger boxes today, as you can pretty much do any of the rest of them with it. We'll go over that. So what an entry is and consists of, if you're on console, some of the lines may not exist. You should be able to add them in. So you're going to want to add all these parameters so we can alter them. First up, we have position. That's just your X, your Y, and your Z. So they know where the center point is of this box that we're about to create. The orientation is the yaw, pitch, and roll, or roll, pitch, and yaw. Okay, there we go, yaw, pitch, and roll. And we're most of the time only going to mess with the yaw, the first one. It's just your rotation. Uh, if you're just now tuning in to how the rotations work on the game, uh, zero is north as well as 360 is north, so 180 would be south, so forth and so on. The size is how big the grid is, so to speak. Uh, consider each one of these to be meters, so the box is 15 meters by 5.6, 10.8. The volume inside would be the darkness. Eye accommodation is how much accommodation the player has when inside this trigger. So the higher the number, from my understanding, is less dark, and zero would be pitch black. So if you have the gameplay setting for personal light off, it's going to be extremely just dark. We're going to skip breadcrumbs for a moment. We're going to go over interpolation speed. What this is is how quickly it transitions from one value to the next. So if you're going from outside into the doorway and you want it to trigger right at that moment, or you don't want it to go pitch black instantly, this would be time in seconds. I find that a nice three to five is a clean transition. And breadcrumbs deals with other types of triggers. So you can have basically children of subsections with their own little parameters and whatnot to have different accommodation for areas within a main trigger. We're not going to go over that or any of the rest of these as we are just going to set up a simple outer trigger. You will need to play with the rest of them, read this documentation, learn some shit. So the first thing you need to do is go get Daisy Editor. We can check that out in another video. We go ahead and subscribe to this mod. And once you've subscribed to this mod, you're going to go ahead and open up your launcher. And it's going to prompt you at the bottom with a message telling you that the new mod was installed. You're going to click load the mod. I've already done this and seem to have a corrupted mod that I'm working on somewhere whatever and how we're going to do this is when you select your mods for your loadout with daisy editor you can pretty much load just about anything so far to use them and play with them i've used the atm mod currently using key card room standalone so i can add some doors to what i'm about to show you so we need to find the darkness mod right here we're going to select load that also if you didn't know when you create a loadout, if you go up here to the preset, you can create some loadouts, save them. So you have like this one has builder, this one doesn't. This one's my custom one that has many mods because these have props. And for something like this or external assets, you would add the mod. 
save that loadout. And now when I load up my launcher, I can simply choose loadout and I'm ready to rock. So just like we do regular editor, which this is regular editor, you simply click play. We're going to let that load up. All right, so here we are in editor, loaded up at Novi Sober as always. I'm going to load up a DZE. This is going to teleport us and take us to my last save point of said build. Let's take a look at the quarry bunker I'm working on at the moment. Made a little cave system and whatnot. Currently using builder items. But it has a bunker that interweaves throughout it. And I would like to add some underground triggers to this setup. So that I can properly make this a bunker. In Chinars. As well as not touch my little cave areas. I would like these to be regulated by a regular day and night cycle. That way it functions like a regular cave would of this stature. And the bunker, of course, will act like it should be. A couple entrances here. I still need to add the doors for the key cards. Uh, probably have to add something for the console community as I will convert this for them when the time comes. But to do that, I need to erase all the extra stuff that I'm not too concerned with. For this particular scenario, I need to get rid of all my rocks so that I can simply use the triggers where I need them. So this is a little bunker situation I've set up, just kind of messing around or whatever, to have on Chinaris. I'm using external mods again, a uh, key card, tier three door right here. And I'll have some other doors throughout here. And I've buried this with various rocks and caves, kind of get the idea, but I need to put underground triggers specifically where these things are. Cause I don't really want them to be anywhere else. I would like the caves to flow normal throughout the night and day. There's a little cave through here. I don't know why I'm going through here like y'all know that. But to get started, you're going to go up here to your items list. Actually, reverse. Eric. What we're going to do here is lock these down so that I don't fuck my shit up. All right, so we're going to look up trigger, and that's going to bring us a couple grid options. It's going to bring us a 20 by 20 and a 10 by 10. So if you have something large like this, Kind of gives you a starting point so you know what you need to do. So for something this large down here, I'm going to use the 20 by 20. And you want to kind of center it up the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be pretty centered. That way you can get an accurate reading of the area. And since this is going across multiple areas, I'm going to start it off like this. I don't want it to be all the way down, but I'll just have to take off some squares for this area. And what we're going to do is the various axes we need to put in our triggers entries. So once you get that pretty centered up, what you want to do is you're going to start going along the axes, 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 whatever. And it's kind of going to be a little opposite of what you think. So this X here and this Y up here and there's a Z over here. They all represent the axis. So when you measure, you need to make sure you're counting the squares or measurements correctly. To get the actual Z axis, since the Z is this axis, I think what I'm going to do, at least this is my first time using the tool. I'm going to look at the X axis and then I know I need the sideways one. So this would be my Z and per standard measurements, X, Y, and Z. And of course the actual center point of this. So to start with, I'm going to find this sections. I'm then going to do this little section. 
I'll do this section and I'm just going to do this in multiple small sections. So I'm going to do this first one with y'all and then I'll probably time lapse me working on the rest of it. But to get started, Alt-Enter is going to keep this page from disappearing when I tap my Windows key because I need to be able to pull this up while working. And you can Alt-Enter again and now you can freely move in and out of the app. Comes handy in situations. So I'm going to lock it into this. I'm going to double click this so I can get these parameters here. Then I'm going to pull my notepad up. Whatever text editor you're using, simply need to copy these directly over here. But you cannot click on this. It will take you back to this. Keep that in mind. So you're going to have to actually type these. Don't fuck up. 8750.43 is what my x axis is. Y axis 116.8805. And slide that over. The Z. 13257. And that's going to be the center point for this trigger. Now we need the orientation. So if you're starting with the Chinaris file, the underground triggers is pretty empty. You're missing a few parameters here compared to your Livonia file. You're going to want to add in orientation and you're going to want to add in interpolation speed. Again, you can reference the documentation to add any parameters you will need. So for our orientation, that's going to be the X in the orientation. And that's just the rotation of the object. We're going to hit the Windows key so we can pull our notepad back up. We need a 19.4. We're going to call it 19.5. And now it knows which direction the center point needs to be facing. So we have a grid from it. Again, control S to save, make it a habit. I'm going to go ahead and zero these out since we will be changing them. Now let's start counting some squares. All right, so now we need to get the x-axis. Now the x-axis is going left to right from the angle I'm sitting. And again, same as the z, we're going to count outwards and then double it. Or in this particular case, since I need it to be longer than the grid is, we know that this is 20 by 20. And then we have a 10 by 10 to work with. So I'm going to simply guesstimate where those connect right around there that adds 10 which makes 30 somewhere around here so I need it to be 32 add another 10 down here make that plus the 2 that'd be 42 so let's make that 42 and that's going to be our X size control S to say and now we need the Y. So the Y is the up and down. We need this to be, well, let's see, roughly 10 down, 10 up. So that's pretty good the way it is. We can just call that 20. So we're gonna open this up. We're gonna add 20 in there. So, Speeding ahead, as I've already added my couple of lines in, fix the error that I noted before in this video. And with some trial and error, this is what I've come up with for the first little section of my bunker. Um, showed you how to use the tool. You're going to have to play with it a little bit, kind of get it how you want it. But let's load in, check out the power of the underground triggers. All right, so here we are back on my Nitrato PC server. GG Adventures if you want to check it out. It's a little project. Got a couple entrances here. Let's run through and check this out. See what we got. Got a little tunnel entrance. Again, work in progress. Need to add a door. So we're pretty good here. And now we have darkness. So again, need the door. And hopefully it'll be alright. And then we can run around here. And it ends here. Now in this piece, there's this little middle section. This little middle section 
this area sticks out further than those doorways so I've had to come through and create another trigger within the trigger to capture all the area but I think I got it set pretty decent that's just inside the bunker area we can run down through the cave system underneath and we are perfectly unaffected again you will have to play with this some so you can get it how you want it but that's pretty much going to be it for this one a little breakdown of the underground triggers so you can get your caves and your bunkers and everything set up just how you want them to be hope you learned some shit i'm out